All right, let's see if we've got, here he is. Oh, I can't bring him in, Athena. I think I need to be a co-host to do that. Well, I'll, I'll do it and then I'll make you co-host. Thank you. Um, all right, we're waiting on Councillor Ette to join us in the room. There he is. Excellent. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. Superb. Oh, what wonderful and superb. That is the kind wow. of attitude I like to hear coming into a GOL meeting. Glad to hear that. All right, everybody. It is Thursday, March 21st, 7.32 p.m. I'm going to call this meeting of uh, the GOL committee to order. Um, and I'm going to begin by taking uh, taking roll, I guess, checking to make sure everybody can hear and hear me. I don't know if I, I like, I don't think I like calling it taking roll, um, but I'm going to start off with uh, Pat DeAngelis, Patricia DeAngelis today. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Excellent. George Ryan. Present. And Councillor Ette. Present. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to start as always with public comment. We have no attendees currently. Uh, so this is a short, a, a brief public comment period. Um, and then I wanted to make some, I'm gonna move past it now since there's no one here. I wanted to make a note, um, the Children's Mental Health Week proclamation. Um, there was a bit of a snafu, I know, hang on. Um, there was a bit of a snafu with that. Uh, and Pat had said she is willing to sponsor it, but um, I think Pat will probably need time to make the edits to the proclamation itself. Um, I did not receive an updated version. I'm going to call on Pat and then Lynn to, oh, or Lynn, I guess, sorry, Lynn. Yeah, it's, uh, because we didn't have anybody act on it. I did send it out to all counselors today and both Mandy Johanneke and uh, Andy Steinberg have also been said they are interested in sponsoring. I can't hear you. I, what I believe Pat is going to say is that I can be off of it. Then I th didn't think there was anybody, and it's I think it's a reasonable and, resolution. So the other thing is that uh, I think in the past it was Councillor Miller who it wanted it, and so I, I suggested that she. We're going to be do raising hands today. Sorry, Pat, I'm cutting yeah. off. We're going to. I know. She suggest. I suggested that they approach her as a community sponsor. Thank you, Pat. You raised several I, hands. Originally you originally didn't say anything about sponsoring it because the it was had Pam Rooney and someone else's name on it originally. So I just assumed. Anyway. Regardless, um, because I'm glad it now has sponsors, but uh, those sponsors probably will want to take a look at it and change the dates to say 2024. So it is not going to be something we discussed today. That is the main point here. Should you want to jump on as a sponsor, it sounds like reach out to, you said Councillor Steinberg and Councillor Haneke. Okay, excellent. That was item three on the agenda. We're now going to move to item four, which is Jewish American Heritage Month Proclamation. I seem to only have this in PDF form. Lynn, do you have it in a Word document? You do? Would you be able to pull that up or send it to me? I don't mind making edits, I so just- I will be glad to pull it up. Thank you. In fact, I was just working on it because and, and you may decide that we should delay um, action, but um, can I pull it up? I must be screen share. Yes. Okay. Uh, since this version, I think, is what was in your packet, um, Pam Rooney has also come on as a sponsor. And Hilda Greenerbaum and Rachel Vig Vigderman uh, have confirmed that they are sponsors. And Dorothy Pam has confirmed that she's a sponsor. So, so that's some things there. So, um, sorry. Let me also just mention before we go any further, I'm still working on an update to this paragraph. And yeah. if people feel that that should prevent us from acting tonight, this could be delayed because the Heritage Month is actually May and we meet twice in April. Although the problem is the council doesn't 
well, that's not true. The council will probably be also the last Monday of April. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the uh, edits that could be made that would still keep the sense of that paragraph. I think, uh, Councillor Grismer, are you saying that the edits made would simply be an update to numbers and would not change um, anything other than numbers in that? Let paragraph? me just change uh, screens for a moment and show the committee. Um, Before you do that, I want to hear George's question, if that's okay or comment, Councillor Ryan? Just in general, I think um, we shouldn't act on proclamations if the sponsors haven't finished uh, getting it ready. Um, we have some council sponsors present so they can speak, I guess, for the group, but if they're not certain, then I think we should just put this off. I am inclined to agree with you. I think, I uh, if, and, and as long as I think my, my check-in was, is this going to be a problem in terms of a community event? And it sounds like Lynn, you're saying it is not. I, I would like to, I, I've actually sent a suggested change in paragraph to Rabbi Wiener, and I would prefer to get his feedback back and therefore not count, uh, do this tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so we are going to delay the Jewish Heritage Month proclamation to our next meeting. Thank you, uh, everyone, for your input. George, do you have something else to add? Um, no, okay. All right. <clears throat> Fastest or two resolutions yet. Um, okay, we are going to move on to the finance committee appointments. Um, we have not received any new CAFs for this particular committee. We are getting to the point where we need to, um, well, we're always at the point where we need to discuss what we would like to do. Um, we have at this point discussed the selection guidance and voted that. We cannot vote the interview questions, but we have discussed them. Um, once we confirm the pool, we can move forward with an interview date and confirm the interview questions. Would folks like to, at this point, would anyone like to make a motion to find the pool sufficient for the finance committee? Pat, you, your hand went up. Mind me, I apologize. What? Can you remind me? I apologize, I don't have it on me right now. I can't find my notes for tonight. Uh, who, who the people are or how many people there are. There are two people we cannot, their names are not public. Yeah, I think I know, okay. And there are two slots, yes? There's one slot. There will be another slot slot opening, but it, we are only appointing for one position. And when the next position opens, people will have to resubmit a CAF. We can only, our rules, this is something that has been mentioned as a possible change. Um, the, uh, it's not actually in our rules. It's a, uh, the policy on making appointments to multiple member bodies. Folks have brought up the fact that for examples like this, or for examples where someone, you know, submitted a CAF for the Charter Review com uh, Committee on January 1st, but we posted the opening January 4th, that January 1st CAF does not count. Some folks have suggested that we may want to consider changes to that policy. To date, no one has brought forward proposed bylaw changes um, as it is a bylaw or as it is a policy. Um, so we would need to go through that process. It's not our, it's not in our rules. Councilor Ryan, you unmuted. Did you have a thought? No. Okay. Um, Pat, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I don't see why we don't declare the pool sufficient. I mean, I'd love to see more people, but so I can move to do that if somebody will second it, if they agree. All right, we have a motion to find the pool sufficient for the finance committee uh, applicants. Is there a second? It fails. It, <laughs> the motion fails. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> it's. I understand, Pat. I, I understand where you're coming from in terms of wanting to, to advance. Get it done. For me, the challenge is we've been voting this number insufficient for the past many weeks. Um, I don't know why I would change that. Now, Councillor Ryan? Yeah, um, two is just not enough. Do we have, well, I know that there's no set number. Do, no, folks have, the, yeah. do folks have a number in mind that they'd like to get to? More than two. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I'd like to just briefly discuss what we're going to do to get more applicants for this. 
Um, if folks have any brainstorm ideas here, we've emailed out to counselors. Um, I will reach out again to folks who have submitted CAFs in the past. If that, if people think that might be helpful. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay. I'll do that again. And maybe I can see if Athena can pull a list of CAFs from further back than just the last, I think it was, I think she pulled the last two years, but I can look for further back. I'm writing, hang on. I got to send some, write myself some notes here. Uh, counselor Ryan. Oh, Councilor Ryan, Athena has told me not to cut people off to put her in line first. So I'm I'm going to Councilor Ryan, then I will go to Athena. You know, there are two current resident non-voting members there. And it's not ideal, but two is two is, you know, so I don't see the rush. Um is there a deadline? Um, other than, you know, it's it'd be we should have at least three or four or five applicants. And then we would sit down and we would go through them and we would choose who we felt was the best person. If we have only two applicants, that really limits our ability to, to make, I think, a, a good choice. Um, so if it stays two for the next month or so, it's not the end of the world. Um, they've both been on there for some time and they both are, are I think, uh, strong contributors. I'd love to, to do it tonight, but we don't have the numbers. And uh, I think we just have to keep making this point to people and using our own networks, but I would be very uncomfortable. Actually, I probably wouldn't um, vote to approve a pool that has only two members in it. Thank you, Councilor Ryan. Athena? Hi, thank you for not calling on me first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, learning. I, I can go back and run, I can pull the CAFs that were submitted before, um, I wanted to suggest that you reach out to the current applicants and let them know okay. that um, the committee is still uh, looking for additional applicants and you know interview interviews are on the way or something so that they uh -huh. are not kind of in limbo. And then um, I, I also wanted to point out, not that I am encouraging the committee to do anything differently than what it just did, but the regional school budget is coming to the council on April 1st, and that's going to be a significant issue this year. And then the town budget is coming May 1st. Um, so I think if appointing somebody in sort of mid budget is it's going to be a difficult um, position for them to be in. And, and the committee is going to be facing this appointment again <clears throat> at the end of June. So um, I just wanted to point out that there will be another vacancy at the end of June and recruitment is an issue for this committee, for the charter review committee, and also for CBA and planning board. And I wonder if the committee would consider requesting TSO think about this issue as part of their outreach charge and potentially make a recommendation to the council about how it could better outreach to potential mm -hmm. applicants and, and work on developing some kind of um, plan for the council or recommendation. George is on TSO, he could tell me. <laughs> I'd love to hear Councilor Ryan's thoughts on that, no, but um, just to... Thank you, Athena. Councilor Ryan? Yeah, it is within the charge of TSO and I, I think it makes sense. I don't know that TSO will have any more luck, but that is what one of the things we're supposed to be doing. So I'd be happy to pass that along to uh, Chair Steinberg and see if we can get it on. I, I assume we'd want to do it sooner rather than later. So hopefully it would be on the next agenda. Um, TSO tends to get jammed up sometimes with you know stuff that comes from town. But um, yes, I think Athena makes a good point. I'd be happy to send it to Andy and hopefully it'd be on the next agenda. Do we need to get this officially referred as an item to TSO, uh, Athena? Um, I, I mean, the committee could agree by consensus to to make that request. I think okay. if you wanted to make it a little bit of more official, you could, um, as the chair, communicate with the chair of TSO that the committee has um, talked about this issue and is interested in TSO's input or a recommendation to the council about how it could how the council could tackle this issue as like holistically rather than each each recommended committee crc and gol trying to figure out this problem in their two separate camps yep okay thank you uh councilor ryan i think also it makes sense chair to chair i mean i will certainly pass this along but i think honey you should reach out to andy and just say 
um, assuming the rest of our colleagues agree that the committee and consensus is, is asked for your, our help. Uh, are there any members of the committee who are opposed to the idea of me reaching out to Andy um, and asking him to have a conversation at TSO to think about improving systems of outreach to be a more holistic, considering the struggles that individual committees are having right now in receiving CAFs for open positions? It's a long statement. Is anyone opposed to that? Okay, I am seeing general consensus. Athena? Um, so also it might be worthwhile including um, the CRC chair on that email to, to give them a heads up that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm highlighting this so I remember to do it. One moment. Okay, thank you everybody. We'll keep going. Um, so then there's nothing else that we can do at this. Oh, Athena, your hand is still up. I'm assuming it's leftover. Um, okay. So there's nothing else we can do at finance then to, on finance tonight. Unfortunately, we're going to move to charter review committee. We have received one new calf for the charter committee. So outreach, outreach helped, um, counselor Ryan. I've had this thought, we've had this thought before. I don't know what the rest of you think, but um, why can't we suggest to the council that they revise the charge and reduce the number to seven? At that point, we would have at least double the number that we need, and I would feel a little more comfortable going ahead. Um, seven strikes me as perhaps a more manageable number. Um, we're having trouble finding enough uh, to, to fill nine. Um, I think with the current number, I personally would be comfortable going ahead um, if it were seven, but since it's nine, I'm not. I'd like to have at least double the number. Um, I don't know what others think about that. Could we go to the council and say, look, let's just bring it. I mean, nine is arbitrary. Um, it's, I think seven would be perfectly fine and we're having the trouble anyway. So do people think it's worth making that appeal? I'm gonna, um, I. I actually think that's a, a really compelling idea. Um, I think partly because I agree nine is a really unwieldy number of people to have on a committee. Um, my question is with seven people, is the workload different? I, so I'm saying this because is the workload higher for seven people or is it actually going to be any different? Because the reality is even with nine, they all have to engage in every part of the charter, right? So is it that would be my my only concern about dropping it is that increasing the workload. Otherwise, I think that would be compelling. And then my other question is, are we, is there anything permitting prohibiting us from changing the number? Is that um, prescribed somewhere? Uh, Councilor DeAngelis, you're muted. Mike, yeah. sorry. In terms of number, uh, it, you know, I think we'd have to bring it to the council and they would have to vote on it if we made that as a recommendation. I'm not sure I could support it. Um, nine can be a little more unwieldy, I agree. Uh, it will increase the workload on the seven people. And the other thing is that we're trying to get um, community representation um, for the committee. Uh, so nine slots gives us a possibility of more diversity. Maybe not. It depends on who applies, but um, that feels important to me. Pat, can I ask you why you think it would be more work on seven people than nine? Because honestly, having worked on small committees and having worked on large ones, the large ones tend to be more work. So I'm curious what you're, I'm, I'm just curious. What yeah, you're no, I, I guess I'm in a bind right now in my own life where I'm on the, um, a committee, a board with, with, that has just created a not-for-profit and there are four of us and we're doing all of the work that you wouldn't, you know, and and I keep thinking we need to increase the number of board members soon to share more of the workload. So I, I do think that um, even dividing sections of the charter up, or I don't know how the committee would decide to do it, it does mean, I, th I think, more workload on on you know those two extra people could I think help manage uh, the workload. Maybe not depends on who they are. <laughs> but the other piece is to me it's like I have not been impressed with the diversity of people who are interested. Now maybe it's so um, 
I'd love to have the opportunity to get more people. I don't know. Not Thank compelling you. reasons, I know. I was just curious. Thank you. Councilor Ette? I agree with George that a nine is arbitrary, but I, I think it provides an opportunity to have a broader swath of um, people in town that could apply. I think the word there is diversity. Uh, and I am not sure about the workload increasing or decreasing, but I do think that with extra people, there's a possibility that they could step in when those who are doing a lot of the work might be unable to do so. So it might not necessarily be about um, reducing or increasing the work, but it might just be about having someone provide a spell when others are unlikely to be able to complete the work. I do appreciate that perspective. I think for me, I'm I'm thinking about the work in committees versus the work done at council and how different that can feel sometimes. Um, and I know that this is not, none of these are comparable, right? None of the examples I have in my head are comparable. Pat's example, like we all have different um, lenses that we're looking at this through. I do think, I, I agree nine is arbitrary and I'm partly wondering if we should take this discussion back to council just to have the discussion of revising the charge um, at a council level and explain kind of the, the challenge we're having. We have 14 people for nine spots. Um, some counselors may think that that is absolutely sufficient. And, and I've gotten emails from at least one counselor saying, why hasn't GOL deemed this sufficient? That's plenty, right? Um, ultimately, it's our it's our call. So I do think that I, I see the case to be made um, for revising that, the charge to be seven. Um, I do think we keep making the assumption that we will find more diversity in a nine person committee. And I think that Pat has a good point when you look at the CAFs that are submitted, there are some elements that do offer diversity in terms of when you look at different um, different identities. But uh, I think that it's it still has a lot of, it's still pretty homogenous in other, um, in other aspects as well. So I'm not convinced that that might shift <laughs> between seven and nine. Um, and I'd like to see it shift. So I, I'm, I'm bringing problems and I prefer to bring solutions. So I apologize for that, but maybe Council Ryan has all the solutions for me. Council Ryan? Lynn hasn't spoken yet. So maybe Lynn should. All right, go. go ahead, Lynn. I'm concerned that we, given the fact that this committee is probably going to work for a year, that if we don't start with nine, we may not end up with even five at the end. So mm. I'm concerned about the fallout. And I, I, I liken it to one other committee, and that's the committee that did the redistricting, which was a pretty intense committee. Mm -hmm. And they, first of all, I think they finally appointed one less or something. And they had people had, who kind of had a drop out by the end. So that's my concern. I, I'm, I, I also have to just... <laughs> The irony that I think we're looking at, not only in this committee, but in all the others, is the number of people who are clamoring to be heard in Amherst, the number of people who are clamoring to be part of, you know, decision making, part of discussions, who are wanting to be engaged. And yet, when we put out the call for ways to be engaged, we don't get any answers. So it's I'm I'm it's troubling to me. It really is that um we're not getting responses because of whatever reason. It's hard work. And I don't think um some of the more recent events encourage anybody to participate, but that's just a different perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. Two quick thoughts. One is there is time pressure here that I feel at least where I don't feel it as much with FinCom. Um, we really need, 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 to, need to get this started. Um, and I also feel that um, I think you could get a seven people who would re represent a diverse swath of Amherst. Um, I don't think getting a few more bodies would necessarily change that. Um, you may find that you're getting just individuals who maybe have a particular agenda. So they may be diverse in some sense, but in another sense, um, have a sort of, uh, you know, I've already made their minds up about how this is supposed to go. And that's something that concerns me too. I'd like seven citizens 
from a diverse area, you know, across the, the spectrum, but who are open-minded, who are, you know, <laughs> going to read the charter, they're going to, you know, listen to, I mean, Athena will certainly take them through this and they will um, become more conversant with it. And then um, they will listen to people and then they will see what they think would be best to, to make things better. Um, so just having diversity um, by itself, which is important, um, I think you can get it easily with seven if we if we go about it in a systematic way. Um, and also there's time pressure. But Pat? Uh, yeah, there are some things I hear you saying, George, that I agree with, but I uh, come to slightly different conclusions. I would like everybody on every committee, including the council, to be open-minded. Um, people, when they're interviewed, give very open answers, um, but that's not necessarily how they function. That's true for many of us, all of us maybe. I think the thing that I'm concerned with is when I'm talking about diversity, I would like to see racial and age and uh, diversity, those things. But I'm also talking about people um, who aren't a conglomerate of the same um, ideas. And we see that in the pool. And, you know, you might think this group feels this way, thinks this way, and I might think they think this way. You know, I, I know we can be wrong. Uh, but I think it's compelling. Uh, Lynn's argument is compelling. We're going to lose people over the course of the year. The other thing is that even if we we could, with 14 people, is uh, you could almost say it was sufficient. I would like to see two people for every slot, which we have. In finance, we have two people for one slot, but <laughs> it's such a fine line. Um, but to me, I think we need, my hope always is that the actual work changes people's assumptions because they start to experience a different level of understanding. They begin to hear other ideas. Um, and I think that's important. And I think we need to be careful. You know, it's like I could make a little checklist of the way I think this group is going to go and this group is going to go. Um, and I think nine is a better number. Um, OK, so I, at this point, I would need a motion for us to or I'm going to say that I want a motion for us to bring this back to the council to rewrite the charge. I I think the the. Oh, um, one second, Pat. I think that the point about melt rate is very compelling as well. I, I do think that this is a committee that needs, you know, more than five people. And I would worry about, about folks dropping. I don't want to make a decision based on fear, but I'm, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I think that's a really good point as well. Pat? Yeah, I'm not sure I want to bring it back to the council. So right, that's fine. then you don't yeah, need to, so, to do so. <laughs> but I also don't, I, I want to be careful about how it's phrased. Uh, and I'm sure you would do that because you're very thoughtful. And I mean that I'm not being uh, whatever. I appreciate that. Um, I, I do try to be thoughtful. If there, if someone makes a motion, I think we can discuss it. Um, Councilor Ryan, would you like to make I'm, a thoughtful motion? I'm willing to, well, I don't know about thoughtful, but I'm willing to make a motion <laughs> that um, we go back to the council and at least have a discussion with them about whether they think that lowering the number from nine to seven is something that they'd be willing to do. Um, even and also acknowledge that the committee itself is 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 divided on this. Um, and of course, if this doesn't pass, then then it's not a non-issue. So, but I'd like to at least have the committee vote on it. I think it's worth having the discussion at the council level. Um, so I make that motion. George, that was such a long motion. Could you please summarize it for me in a sentence? Uh, I, I move that uh, we uh, go back to the town council and ask them to lower the, in the charge, lower the number of, of uh, members from nine to seven. Um, is there a second? We are crushing it with yeah. emotions today, y'all. Okay. Athena, oh, Athena took her hand down. Um, okay, Athena, since we aren't going to vote on that, nothing to add? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're good if you're not going to vote on it. 
I'm a- what was going to be wrong with it? I'm I'm, cur- I'm curious. Are we allowed to change the number? <laughs> no, George's motion was just the uh, Council Ryan's initial motion was a little rambly, so I was going to suggest a motion to recommend the council lower the number of uh, members, but not need. That is what I wrote in my little spreadsheet here. So, um, George, I think here's the. It's not even that I'm a po- like. It's fine. I don't I mean, know how I would have voted in that motion. No, but I, right. I do think the conversation is we have to act on this at some point. And so I think that if we are at a point, we are going to need to make the decision as a committee that we either need. To, I, I now I'm seeing kind of this as two options. We are either need we either need to drop the number, magically get a lot more people or deem this pool sufficient. I said two options and gave you three, but um, I don't know what else to do here, y'all. And and I'm open to suggestions. I emailed um, the League of Women Voters the other day because they're doing apparently their own review of the charter. And so I reached out to them and said, hey, this is really exciting that you're doing this. If you'd like to join the official committee or please promote this to your um, folks, that would be appreciated. I know everybody's been doing their outreach, but um, we can't keep not finding this pool big enough. Councilor Ate? Um, I actually think nine as a number is good, but upon reflection, it would have been good to have that discussion in council just so that it could serve as um, a recruiting mechanism. Um, but since the vote is already done, we'll just have to use the normal channels that we've been using. I think someone could make a different motion, a slightly different motion um, and have that be okay. Um, your point is that if we make this motion, we are at least bringing the conversation back to council to kind of highlight the, the dire need that we're having and sort of get more input on that, on the options that we've got in front of us. Is that, am I summarizing what you're saying? Exactly. There's a lot of action right now in council. It's must watch TV. And so um, <laughs> this, in addition to everything else that is going on, that would be a very good arena to present um, a dire need in this case. I see your point. Pat? I move that. <laughs> <laughs> whatever athena was going to say <laughs> can i read it can i read it i i'll make motion and, and pat you can second it so um i move that the gol committee take the uh the gol committee i wrote it down it looks weird go back to the town <laughs> recommend <laughs> recommend to the town council lowering the number of committee members on the charter review committee from nine to seven that they discuss it yeah. discuss discuss it I second it. Okay, so we have moved and discussed that the GOL committee recommend the town council discuss lowering the number of committee members on the charter review committee from nine to seven. Uh, on it, if I yeah. if I may, um, I, I I would encourage you to just recommend it, and then yeah, the committee doesn't have to yeah. vote unanimously. It, ultimately, it will be a council discussion and and vote. So, I mean, asking the the council to discuss something without asking them to change the number is a little bit weird. Okay. All right. So, so, Pat, so the you, you know you, you would recommend the council lower the the, the um, number of members, and then the council would discuss and vote on whether or not it wants to lower the members. You know, you would. You don't need to ask them to have a discussion about it because they're not going to just go, oh, GOL, have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> would, you, would you keep your second on this if that is the change? Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I don't want any repeat of other things. So I was going to pull my second, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. We have a motion to second, Councillor Ryan. Do you have a, a comment? Yeah, just just make the point to my colleagues that, of course, they can easily vote against this at the council. So um, all we really want is to hear what our councilors think. Um, and if we vote, if we get a three to two or four to one vote, um, you can easily, when you get to council, uh, vote against it. So this is just to, as Athena said, to make a specific recommendation. Um, then it goes to the council and they will discuss it. And if they do come to a vote, 
you all will be free to vote how you feel, which you may very well decide, no, I want to keep it at nine, and you'll vote no. Thank you. I think but at least it gets to the council, and it, I think, is, is, as uh, Councilor Ete says, it, it also might do a little bit to spur some, some applications. Who knows? I think Lynn's going to um, reach through and hit me upside the head for adding things to her agendas. Uh, Athena? I would also strongly suggest that you include in the GOL report that the committee was divided and you know oh. wanted the council to have this discussion with the understanding that um, there, there wasn't a consensus among members that something was about. Thank you, I will. Um, one moment, please, and then we will go to a vote. Um, okay. All right, moving to a vote on this motion. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Aye. Uh, Pat? Aye. Lynn? No. Councilor Ette? Aye. And I am an aye. Okay, so that is moved. ADG, second, DD, four, one, zero. All right, that is uh, the motion passes. Um, four in favor, one opposed, no absent, no abstentions. All right. That is that. Um, we have not, to my recollection, and I'm welcome, I welcome corrections. I do not believe we officially voted the selection guidance for the Charter Review Committee. So I put it back on the agenda. I know we discussed it, but I think there was confusion as to whether or not we could vote it. Does anyone have a different recollection than that? All right, great. Thank you. So I'd like to pull it up um, and just revisit it briefly. And um, I'm going to just share my screen really quick just so we can see if anyone has any edits. And if not, I would like to vote this. We cannot vote the interview questions, but we can vote the selection guidance. Okay. Point of order, you can you could vote the interview questions after you vote the selection guidance. I thought that it said once we've set the uh, interview date. You can check me on that, but I think the, the order is that you just need to do the selection guidance before you do the interview questions. I don't think you need to set the date first, but you can, you can check. I can't bring up the, um, the policy at the moment. Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. don't do it when you're right. right. um, Give me one second, I will pull that up. If folks wanna take a one minute break while I do that, you can turn your camera off and stretch for a minute. And if you don't wanna take a break, you can go into what I sent you via email that is in your packets to review the selection guidance that we will have up um, in a moment. All right. Prior to selecting statements of interest to developing interview questions or holding interviews, the recommending committee shall by majority vote adopt selection guidance for filling the vacancy and shall provide the document in full to the council and all known applicants prior to the deadline for submitting statements of interest. So I would agree with Athena then that we could go ahead and vote the interview questions as well. We just can't solicit, we just can't, um, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Athena. So let's start with whoop, selection guidance for the Charter Review Committee. Um, this is something we had previously discussed. This means we've had time to let it marinate, which is really exciting. Love a good processing time. Um, hang on. Charter Review Committee question. I'm sharing the right thing. All right. Oh my God. Okay. So starting with the selection guidance here, everybody seeing this? We're good. Not seeing any saying anyone saying I'm wrong. Okay. Um, try to review selection guidance. These are listed in alphabetical order. They are not listed in priority order. Councilor Ryan. When you're ready. Oh, oh no, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to read through them. So go ahead. Um, I wanted to start with the, the header. I'm not the 
the uh, brief two line. This part? This, right. Yes, exactly. And yep. I have some suggestions for this. Um, what I'm thinking, well, I'm going to just state how I would write this, and then if someone you can decide what you think. But items below, and then I would insert, represent some of the criteria GOL is looking for in selecting potential candidates, period. It is not an exhaustive list, and no one candidate is expected to possess all or even many of these criteria. I'm not happy with the word criteria. Maybe we can come up with a better word, trait, characteristic, I don't know. But um, the message I think we're trying to get across, I think, is that we're going to use these to guide us. It's not an exhaustive list. We, I mean, or maybe we will say it. Maybe we'll say these are the ones we're going to use. In, but the thought is it's not an exhaustive list, and we don't expect anyone to possess all and probably even many of these attributes or characteristics or criteria. I think that's what we're trying to say in this sentence. Do people so agree, do agree with it? Yeah, yeah. Proposal here. Um, and then I want to do, I think we will need some sort of guiding text below it just to contextualize the bulleted list. Yes. Lynn, you're muted. I would say represents some of the criteria GOL will consider in selecting. And I would insert even before many. So it says, and no one candidate is expected to possess all or even many of these criteria. I think that I'm I'm comfortable with that. I want to add one of the things I really liked about this language um, mm -hmm. before was the guiding recommendations part. Um, and so I think I what if we change this to the guidance below represents some of the criteria. Mm -hmm. GOL will consider in selecting potential candidates. It is not an exhaustive list and no one candidate is expected to possess all or even many of these criteria. Um, and then I, I don't like what I wrote here. I just threw something in so I didn't forget because it, it kind of almost undermines what we just said. So I would love to hear if folks Just have, delete it, just delete it, just take it out. It, you don't no, need, you need before anything, you, hang before on. You, yeah, before you delete it. Do we think, I can rewrite it. Um, I think we need something to contextualize. Lynn? Yeah, I also I actually would leave it there and say um committee should represent a mix of these experience. Something about because what we lost by the sentence above is talking about the mix across the group. Well, we have that here. It's in, it's in the criteria. No, we say mix here of life experiences. We don't say mix of all the experiences. Demographic diversity, including racial, economic, gender, and generational diversity. Okay, maybe I should explain my point better. Yeah, I'm sorry. What we're looking for and is- And I'm going to start cracking down on hand raising. Lynn? What I was looking for was across, in the whole group, we will take into consideration a mix of all of these not just you know mix of this or a mix of that i'm wondering okay i'm wondering if we could put something like a robust charter committee will include a mix of this is terrible the following mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to kind of get at what lynn is saying can mm -hmm. someone help me make this sound less weird yes. Include representation yeah, of the good. following. That's yeah, good. I think it's good as it is. If it captures, I think it captures Lynn's point. Lynn, does this capture what you were saying? You're muted. 
That's fine. That is fine. You know, when my mom said that is fine to me as a kid, I never actually believed her. Um, fine is a good word. <laughs> okay. Um, I like robust. I think that's an excellent addition. And it has mix, which is what we been stressing here. And it, it makes it clear that it's it's a mix of things. It's not any one, right? I think it's good. Okay. I'm going to accept my own changes. This is how the, um, we'll put the data in here when we do it, but this is how the selection guidance will read to applicants. I want us to read it through, everybody take 30 seconds, read it through one more time as if you were an applicant to the Charter Review Committee and give me your thoughts then. Um, Councilor, and I'm going to give everybody 30 seconds to just do a quick group. Quiet reading. When you're done, if you could just wave at me or something. Councilor Ryan, before I go to Lynn, did you have a comment from before? I think just a very small suggestion. I hate it when we use the same word twice in two different contexts. So I'd like to take the word mix out of the second bullet point and make variety of life experiences. Is there any opposition to that? Okay, Patterson's. I thought you were gonna say prior. <laughs> um, Lynn? I, I would say representative across all town districts. I don't know what's right there. I know what we want, and that is we want all districts one through five represented. I think that's a nice setup. Thank you. Any other changes to this? Yes, Pat DeAngelis. Wouldn't it be representation across all town districts? Not probably. Mm -hmm. Or representative of all districts, but not. I don't know. It's like rep representation. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, Councilor Ryan? This is just a comment for what it's worth, which isn't much. I think this last one is important, but I think it's going to be very difficult for us to achieve it. I do too. Yeah, I think it's something we will try to do. But I think, um, but yeah, I think it should be here. But I think it's going to be, especially if we're talking about, you know, 10 or 11 or 12 people, it's going to be tough. Absolutely. Okay, with that, unless there are any more edits, I move that the GOL committee adopt the Charter Review Committee selection guidance uh, dated, which will be dated March 21st, 2024. Is there a second? Second. second. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can take my notes, sorry. Um, all right, I'm going to take ah, my windows. There's so many windows. Okay, I officially lost my window, so I'm gonna write the vote in here. Um, Councilor Etta, you, uh, you seconded that, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Calling the vote. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Aye. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Lynn Griesmer. Aye. And Councillor Ette. Aye. And I am an aye as well. It is unanimous. Nicely done, everybody. Okay, we are going to move on to the Charter Review Committee interview questions. Once I write down... That we voted. Sorry. I like to write down the votes, even though I know Athena's got it, just in case I need to put it in my report for some reason. All right. Uh, moving on to the interview questions. We have written those too. Look at us go. Um, but we have not visited these in a while. So we've got questions. Um, we've got a lot of questions. And I think now we can start to whittle them down. I am going to give us about 20 minutes for this discussion. And then we're going to move on to the next topic because we have not found the applicant pool um, acceptable at this point. I'm okay if we do not approve these today. 
uh, unless there's an objection to that idea, but we've got a lot of work to do here. So um, this was sent to you as a PDF. Uh, folks have been able to review it. I'd like us to remember that if we are seeking to have, I know the rough number of two for every one spot has been tossed out there. We're looking at somewhere between 14 and 18 interviews, uh, interviewees minimum. So um, I'm gonna throw it out there that I think we have too many questions at this point to, to make this feasible. Um, so what I, I wanna make efficient use of our time. What I would like people to think about is on this list, first off, are these questions, uh, question categories still covering all of the things that we wanna cover? And second, what, which questions would you prioritize in each area if you picked, if you picked, I'm not gonna give you a number to pick, Pat. Uh, I'm gonna make a comment uh, about uh, general amateurs. Wait a minute, uh, let me see. Where is it? Um, this one? I guess so. How long have you lived in Amherst? Why is that important? You could live here a very short time, but have uh, lots of experience. So I'm uncomfortable with that one. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, uh, there was something else. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was speaking about students and I guess I made it more mm -hmm. students. What do you like about what difference does it make whether you like living in a college town or what the challenges are if you're working on the charter? And I'm I you know and I I feel like those are some of the things that yeah I just have a big question about that. I'm sorry, Ryan. Yeah, I think I hear you, Pat. I think this is meant to, I mean, 60% of our population are students. The charter affects them as much as everybody else. So the thought was to get something in here about 60% of our population. Um, I agree with you that maybe in the end it really doesn't, I mean, it's a question. I don't know the answer. I just felt that it would be valuable to uh, give people an opportunity to just express themselves about a fundamental fact about Amherst, which is that it is a college town. Um, what does that have to do with the charter? Well, I think you raise a good point. It's not clear. There's a direct connection. But some of these questions are more about, you know, like, I think an important question is, you know, how do you become informed? How do you, you know, how right. do you keep abreast? So some of it's sort of just teasing out a little bit, you know, where they're coming from and right so i i wouldn't live or die with this one but um i guess that's why i suggested it i don't know thank you george pat yeah thank you george i i just i'm if there was a different way of uh, I'm, it just feels like that hasn't got, it doesn't have anything to do with the charter uh, yeah but acknowledging sorry i had a thought. i mean are we going to have 60 percent of this people on the charter commission students i don't want anything <laughs> there's my point i always i'm really old um the i want to i would love to see some of the college students who live in amherst and are interested in this kind of work around you know be on this committee and I, i'm feeling like somehow or other that I, it just feels to me off-putting and supportive of um a tendency in this community to blame students for everything and we're not you know i, I don't i don't know it just I, if you know i will go where the committee decides but uh, that's my basic discomfort i think Thank you, Pat. I'm ignoring my urge to let Athena cut in. Lynn? Uh, let Athena cut in? No, no, no. She told me not to. Lynn? <laughs> oh, I just want to go back up. She would up. interrupt us if we're going to like accidentally break the law. So go ahead. I'd like to go back up to the top. It does seem to me that in a, um, in the, when we asked people for their 
um, whatever that written statement uh, is. Yeah, you could have a couple of preliminary questions. One would be how long have you lived in Amherst? Mm -hmm. Another could be is what district do you live in? Um, and, you know, there might be one or two of these instead of asking the question here. So um, that's, that's that. I still think it's important to know how long a person's lived here, but I don't think we have to waste a question. on. Um, when you go up to where you just uh, edited in, I actually think that's a good way of getting around this. I think it's just important to see how the charter uh, impacts college students, seniors, families, et cetera. Uh, I think that's a good way of getting to the same thing, but not maybe having to feel, excuse me, having to feel like it's been retargeting students. Um, I did just throw this in there and I raised my hand to discuss it. I'm sorry. I, I need to write things down or I forget them. And then when I'm sharing my screen, I recognize that you have to watch me do that. Lynn, can I ask a follow-up question before I go to counselor Ette? Can you tell us why you believe it's important to know how long someone has lived in Amherst? What does because that contribute to their career? In our criteria, we have a variety of experience. In, and one of them, I believe, was length of time you live. I don't think, for example, we want a committee of nine people who have only lived here for five years. I just pulled up our um, selection guidance. We do not say length of time living in town. The reason I ask you what that brings is, is I, I think that there's a classic New England trope of when someone introduces themselves, they also include how long they've lived in whatever town they've lived in. And it skews a bias towards people who live in one place longer than another as having valid experiences. And so I do worry that asking that question does at least give the appearance that we are skewing that way. Um, I disagree. I, my bottom line is I don't want a committee where only everybody's lived here for five years. It's so, so why though, is my question. Why? Yes. Because that's not representative of Amherst. Okay. Counselor Ette. Um, I think the idea was we could have that question of how long you've lived here as not a question to ask during um, the interview, but something that is preliminary. And in that case, I think you'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. That was my suggestion. Thank you. Um, in my case, I would want to return back to the students. I I think the, how do you see the charter impacting different populations is a great way to get to what we are asking. But um there's also the fact that some 60% of the nearly 40,000 residents are college students. The two questions that come after that really have no connection to that first sentence at all. Um, but there is a legitimate question to ask, which is if you have a large number of people who will be affected by the charter, how would their views be representative or how would we get their views in a discussion involving a review of that same charter? So um, I don't think a question about students is wrong. I just don't think the questions we have there are the right ones. Do you have an alternate proposal? Give me a moment. If not yet. I'm, it I'm open to it if you do. Okay. Um, so I had added this bullet up under the charter section, trying to get it, I think what George was suggesting um, with a mix of what Pat was saying, because I, I really see that point of, we need to make sure the focus here is on the charter review. Um, and thinking, I actually really think that the question of, that George is bringing up is, is the impact that our charter has um, I think people often don't necessarily realize how, how broad that charter is, like how, how much it, it, um, determines the direction of so many things in town. So I'm, I actually am intrigued by the idea of asking people how they believe the charter impacts different populations. And I'm trying to figure out how to make sure they answer it for, for like specific ones. Like I actually, I would like to hear how they think it impacts college students, how it impacts seniors, right? Like, like certain populations that we know we, um, 
have significant numbers of. Um, so I'm, I, this is what I put in. If folks have thoughts on it, I'm open to hearing them. Athena. Oh, and I have a question for Athena too. Oh, ask your question, please. Are we allowed to change the questions that we ask in the statement of interest form? Um, no, actually, that was one of the things I was going to mention. The statement of interest is in the policy. It, it says what you asked for in the statement of interest. My That's other comment was, I think, I think the policy requires you to adopt the selection guidance first because the interview questions, you know, the questions you ask during the interviews should get at the selection guidance. If there's an interview question that is irrelevant, then it might feel that a committee is making its recommendation based on criteria that aren't listed in the selection guidance. So I think if it is important to committee members that you have a variety of um, uh, you know, time that you've lived in Amherst, then that should be included in the selection criteria or else it might feel you broke up, but um, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I just want to summarize it again. Um, we set selection criteria. We basically wrote the job description for the committee. We need to ask interview questions that get us that criteria. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to, Lynn, um, I'm assuming your hand is up because you have something to say. I'm going to come back to you in one second. What I would like to then do um, is I'd like to reorganize these questions under the criteria. So I'm going to take the selection criteria we wrote and I can reorganize the questions that we have underneath kind of where they get at. Um, does that seem like a helpful approach so that we can see where we're going or do folks feel like you've got the selection criteria down enough that we could do that right now looking at this? Um, Lynn. If I have to call for a reconsideration of the selection criteria, I will. Okay. To add length of time lived in Amherst. Okay. Um, you're welcome to do that at any point if you'd like to. Councillor Ryan. I'm going to suggest you not rejigger things at this point, though maybe others will feel differently. I think I think is absolutely right that we need to connect the questions that we're coming we're asking here with our selection criteria, but we or guidance. So I think we just need to keep them handy. And when we go through our questions. We want to be asking constantly, is this somehow, how is this connected to our guidance? And if it's not, for instance, um, then I think we have a problem. We're going to have to either get rid of the question or perhaps add something to the guidance. But I wouldn't try to rejigger this. I would, I think the division you have is, you know, basically um, questions about the charter, your prior experience, general questions, background, and then your workings. I think that's, that's a good way to break them up right now. Okay, great. Um, what do you think? I'm fine with that. Um, I raised my hand. When I see length of time in a selection criteria, I have only been alive for 33 years. Many people have lived in Amherst longer than I've been alive. I have only lived here since, oh God, math, uh, for seven or eight years. For many people that, like Lynn, what you just said is that you didn't want a committee full of people who have only lived here for five years. I ran for council and got elected after living here for five years. So what I want, I know, you can, I know, but what I want you to think carefully about if you're going to propose a motion to change the language is please think very carefully about putting language in that does not discourage people who have not lived here for 30 years from applying. That's my big concern because anytime I see that as a consideration, I think, oh, they don't want me there. I don't know enough. So please consider the language you use in, in making that motion. Um, and I think if you look at the CAFs we've received, I do not think we are facing that risk, to be honest with you. Right. We're not. Um, let's look back at the interview questions. There are no hands raised, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, let's start at the top. Oh, sorry, Councilor Ate. Returning to the question, how do you see the charter impacting different populations in Amherst, such as college students, seniors, families? Um, if this were a question asked to someone, is the person going to speak 
about all these categories, some of the categories mentioned, and what if they include categories, of course we use et cetera, but what if they include categories that we may not have considered as um, appropriate in terms of different populations? My take as the person who wrote this is that I think that that's, I don't presume to assume that, I don't presume that I know every population that we might want to include here. And so I do think that it's really, it would be really interesting to hear people share what they feel the, the what populations they, they want to talk about. Um, and I was not expecting someone to talk about all of these populations. I do think including it in the interview questions, which are released publicly beforehand and discussed now um, could give someone ideas of what to talk about. But if they wanted to talk about a different population personally, I think I would welcome that. I think it would be really compelling. Uh, Councillor Ryan? I'm actually in the opposite camp on this one, um, I hate to say. Um, right. I really don't know what this is going to I don't. I don't know how I would answer this question, quite frankly. I mean, that may just tell you something about me, but I haven't, I haven't this foggiest notion how I would answer this question. Um, I know how to answer the first question. I think I could answer the third bullet point. Um, and I hopefully they could say something or I could say something about the fourth bullet point. But in spite of what I put in or I suggested later with college students, um, that was really aimed at something different and perhaps not appropriate given our selection guidance. But I would suggest we not ask questions like this. Um, okay. That's just my thought that um, I'm not sure what it would tell us. It's, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know, maybe somebody else can weigh in here and what, how they would answer this, but I don't know how I would answer this. Um, Athena. I was going to suggest a reword um, that, um, you know, Amherst is a diverse community and how would your work on the committee help take into consideration the diverse populations and, you know, something to that effect rather than trying to, I don't know, did, did, did you catch enough of my word? I can't tell if you can hear me or not. Um, I can hear you. I'm going to, I'm going to type in and say it back to you. Um, uh just a suggestion so it's more about how are you know how is the person going to make sure that all of these diverse voices are, are going to be taken into consideration as they're working on making suggestions about changes to the charter that's my uh okay so what i've got is amherst is a diverse community how would your work on the committee take into account these uh take into account different communities and perspectives um, as you conduct your work. So Councillor Ryan pitched, pitched um, removing this question. I am not wedded to it. I was actually, if you don't like it, I, that's, that's helpful to me because I was trying to get at what you were trying to ask. So I am not um, wedded to this question at all. Is anyone attached to this and feel strongly to keep it? Otherwise, I'm going to delete it. One, two. Oh, Pat, you move so fast. I got scared. Are you <laughs> no, I was just going to say, uh, as long as we have the uh, question, which is now F, I could see deleting it. But I think Council, you know, Councilor Ette made an important point that we need to look at how, when we design our questions. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it that we put down and what what's missing? Um, I, I think I liked it better before you added as you conduct your work, but I yeah. wouldn't, I, but I can't remember exactly what it said. It said just that, but without yeah. as you conduct your work. Yeah, and I, um, I <laughs> your... Councilor Ryan. Um, Whoops. Sorry. Pat raised her hand and dropped it. Go ahead. I don't like F either. Um, because <laughs> basically, no, I'm, I'm serious. This is a serious I point. And we, I'm good that Sorry. we're talking it out because I, I'm not, you know, I, 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 you know, I changed my mind. I would change my mind. Um, but this is kind of like pretty obvious what the answer is going to be. 
What do you think the answer is going to be? Of course, I'm I'm going to make every effort to include all the diverse voices, et cetera. Um, it's that's not what it asks. Well, it asks good. Me how many? Yeah. What ask? Ask what? How would you do that? How are you going to take in those those perspectives into account? I guess my my initial thought was it's our job as this as the committee making the recommendation based on the the caps and based on answers to the questions we're going to shape to create as diverse and broad a group of people as we can. But I, no matter how, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't see that F is going to, um, yeah, I, I, I just think that's our job. But and, I think no matter, I'm yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No matter how good of a job we do, we are never going to be able to get a committee of nine people that represents every perspective in Amherst. Of course, right, of course. So I do think that just as we as counselors need to represent perspectives and experiences that aren't our own, this committee will too. So I do think that a question that gets at how are you going to, and maybe it's more in the outreach question, but like I think something about how are you going to make sure that you're not just representing yourself and your identities and your experiences, but also, you know, kind of trying to take in that those of others to, to bring those forward. It's back to a little bit of virtue signaling. Tell us how you're going to be a good person. And I, I would <laughs> rather learn more about, you know, other facts about their experience and background and so on, and not get into the issue of having them tell me how they're going to try really hard to include all voices, et cetera, et cetera. We, you know, we just assume that, but there's no way we can, I mean, I just don't see what this is going to tell us. It's not going to, you know, other than just, we're all going to go, okay, they've, you know, they've signaled their virtuous, their virtuous, virtuous, they're, they're, you know, that they're, they're good guys, good gals, whatever. I just, I really struggle to see how this is going to help us. Pat, you're muted. <sighs> There's a bizarre way in which I agree with George, but my uh, I think we should leave E in and take out the new F because the new F would have that. This is the way I would do it answer compared to we're, we're just saying, how do you see the charter impacting different populations in Amherst? Even stop there. Do they know that there's difference in terms of race? college students, seniors, families, incomes. What, what, you know, why can't we just say, how do you see the charter impacting different populations in Amherst? Well, gee, everybody's the same, so the impact would be the same. I, you know, I don't know the charter well enough to answer that question, but I think that's an interesting question. And F, eh, I agree with George, it would be a canned answer. Um, My hand is up. Pat, I, I actually... I think I agree with you on E because I think when we think about the elements of the charter that this committee is going to be discussing, it's things like public participation measures, how we do, right? Like there are elements that particularly impact how folks engage with their government. And I do think that that is something that impacts different populations in different ways. Folks who know how to navigate these systems, folks who um, have the time to to engage in different ways. So I do think the question, and I think you kind of answered it in the way that I would be interested in hearing from folks is is just the knowledge that it does impact people in different ways. Um, I think that's a really compelling point. Pat, your hand. Yeah, I, I, I'm sitting here working on a grant for the mobile market and we're talking about translation services. We don't have that. So what we limit our own public uh, engagement because we are not right now for whatever reason providing translation services in meetings um yeah so okay. anyway, i so i don't want f <laughs> okay so pat is pitching getting rid of f is there any um opposition to deleting f right now okay not seeing any all right so we're back to e um george or council ryan excuse me that's fine. Um, I would insert renters. Okay. College students, renters, seniors, families, etc. And I am willing to yield. Um, I do change my mind. Um, I think Pat and and you all make a good point that um, let's hear what they think. Again, I don't know how I'd answer this, but that's 
you know, that would be the, if I were applying, I'd have to think about it. It should be good. I'm wondering if we should also With add long term residents. Pat, hands. I, I that's why I would like to get rid of the list. Sure. I would like to hear what they say, what their list is. That mm. would make a difference mm. to me instead mm. of us coaching the list. Thank you, Pat. That is the last time I will allow you to go out of turn. Lynn. Thank you. I actually agree with Pat. I think he should just end it with enamored question mark. Mm. And that way they demonstrate to us that they know who lives here. And they know what the diversity of Amherst is. Okay. Okay. Is there any opposition to, I don't mind doing that. Is there any, unless we really wanted to hear specifically, which again is not necessarily in our selection guidance. Um, all right. So it would look yeah. like this. I'm okay with that. Is there any, George, your hand is up and Lynn, your hand is up. George, is your uh, hand? I have no objection. I guess the question then is the one I think you were about to ask, which is how does this, where does this connect with our selection guidance? Because what we've said is that we want to make sure to the best of our ability that um, the questions we're asking have some link. So I'm just asking, and I've got the list in front of me too. Um, where do people think this connects with the selection guidance? Does anyone have an answer specifically to George's question? Pat? Yeah, the very first thing, demographic dis diversity. Well, we that, want that's that on, that's and, answered by the, the CAF, right? Um, yes, but but it is yeah. one of, it's our selection criteria now, not where it's getting answered. Variety <laughs> of life experiences, skills, ages, and occupations. So I guess, yeah, I guess my thought is this is more getting at how people think and what they sort of, um, what's their understanding of Amherst, which I think is valuable. I think that that you've made a good point. So maybe we'll just leave it at that. This is a, an important thing for us to, to, to hear. It doesn't map exactly with our criteria, but um, it does get at, um, yeah, maybe life experience, gener diver generational diversity. Okay, all right. Councilor Ate. Um, thank you for highlighting that. It actually maps quite well prior yeah. experience in community engagement. So what community are we speaking of? Um, okay. There's just a brief example. There's a distinction between the fact that I have work from nine to five and um, those who are retired or who might work from home. That's something I wouldn't have known if I didn't end up somehow in um, the council or whatever else we could describe this situation. So the point is different groups may have different ways of connecting with what goes on in town. And the question is getting at what is a community that you could speak of that has been impacted in a particular way by something within the charter? Thank you. That is why I highlighted it. I appreciate um, that we're on the same page. Lynn, your hand was up from before. Um, you had a comment. I actually wanted to go back to your questions. The very second one, B, mm -hmm. there's the word of, I think should be if, yes. Probably so, yep. And if yes, it shouldn't be if comma yes. It should be if yes. Comma. You're right. I, in my defense, I copied and pasted these. Um, no, it's so if yes, comma, do yes. you think, uh, and there should be a question mark at the end of it. Um, and I also think we should say missing elements to the charter, no? Yes, I agree. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Ryan? Oh, sorry, Lynn, were you done? I apologize. But, no, actually, while we're on this, mm -hmm. I actually wonder if we should ask, are there particular areas of strength and or weakness or missing elements in the charter? Let's see as strengths, weaknesses. Comma, or, or missing comma. elements. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ryan? This is one I really wanted to get out. I don't like it. Um, so I, I need to be persuaded or hear some more argument about why. Um, I would like to have people approach this from the perspective of, first of all, they're going to learn a lot, 
hopefully. Um, I'm almost w wishing I could serve on this because I would learn, <laughs> I'd learn a lot. Um, and already asking them to sort of give us their critique of a charter before they even sat down and met with each other. It's kind of like a jury. I mean, maybe there is a logic to some juries. The, the, as soon as they get in the jury room, they immediately take a straw poll. You know, what did you like? What did you like? So I, I, I this makes me really, really, really nervous. Um, uh, and some people will, will run with it and they'll write, you know, and others perhaps will say, well, I just don't really know because I haven't thought that much about it. Um, I don't like this one, but somebody convinced me that that really needs to be here. Lynn? Actually, I would drop the second sentence or question in there. Um, and the reason I like it is because, again, we don't want all like-minded people on the Charter Commission. I mean, some people may say, gee, I think it's a strength that we have X, and somebody else might say, I think that's a weakness. That's good. <laughs> we want diversity of how people think about the Charter. Thank you. I I kind of want to fight both sides on this one. Um, so I'm looking at the Charter Review Committee criteria that we adopted to see where this links back. Um, I could see it linking back with this one um, and maybe that one I could speak to an experience. Uh, I think my thought here is it, I agree with Lynn that this could help us avoid groups, right? Like this, this initial sort of everybody sees the exact same weaknesses, but at the same time, if everybody sees something as a weakness that's applying to this committee, maybe it's a really big weakness that we should fix. Um, well, maybe it's a strength. I'm sorry, I still have my hand up. But that's okay, maybe, absolutely. Maybe so, that's why I added the word strengths, weaknesses, yep. and missing elements, because it really, you know, it, frankly, if they can answer that question, we don't need A. My concern with this, I agree. And I actually was, I want to get rid of A. Um, and I was thinking about the exp the experience I had. I joined the Conservation Commission and I had not wet read the entire wetlands bylaw before I joined the commission, but I dang sure read the whole thing and knew it back and forth by the time I left. So I think I, I don't like A and I would very strongly like to get rid of it. Um, and I'm, I will compromise by keeping B in if folks are, um, if folks would like. I think that this does, what I want to avoid I would like to avoid folks saying GOL picked this person for this committee because they answered question B in a specific way, because we all know that that is not what we are trying to do. We are trying to seek a variety of, of thoughts and experiences and ways of thinking. My concern is that this, um, that's my concern about question two. And so I wanna just make sure that we're asking this for the reasons. And I, I think Councillor Ryan said this said this very clearly, if we're asking for the reason, or I think it was Council Ryan, that we um, are seeking that diversity of experience, diversity of engagement and all of that. So I'm trying to link it back here and make sure that we're still maintaining that that rationale. And I um, was the one that said that, thank you. Oh, sorry, thank you, Lynn, okay. thank you. Councilor Ryan. I agree with you about A, it should go out. Look, we finally got rid of one. We also added. I think, well, I don't know what the others think, but I think it should go out. Um, because I know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah, right. I read it. <laughs> exactly. um, I didn't. <laughs> would you say yes? Okay. Uh, Pat, uh, Lynn, I'm putting you at the end of the line because your hand's still up, but I'm um, it's fine. Pat, it's fine. I agree with removing a. Uh, what was I going to say though? I had to wait so long because I'm. <laughs> Oh, I my people, it doesn't matter. You're going to say you agreed with it me. It doesn't matter what our intent is, no matter how legitimate our uh, intent is, where we're hoping to come from as a committee. People are going to say whatever they want to say about the process if they don't like who gets picked. So, get, you know, you can't worry about it from that angle. You worry about have you created a question that is asking what you want and that has many openings for someone to respond. And I think just saying it uh, the way it is now with the edit is is a good way to do that. The way you came so close to telling me to get over it was hilarious. Um, Athena? <laughs> if I haven't read the charter, then 
how do I answer that question? Just you know. Said. I'm going to jump in. If you haven't yeah, read the you charter, raise we need to know raise that. Raise your hands or I will mute you. <laughs> um, Athena, your hand is still up. Did you have more to add? Oh, you muted yourself again, so I'm going to go with no. Okay, Lynn. So diplomatically, I would say something like, you know, I'm really in the process of coming up with my list. You know, I've come up with some diplomatic way of saying I'm not prepared to answer that question yet. And we also do release these ahead of time so folks have time to prep. Pat, did you have something to add before I yelled at you? <laughs> no. Um, okay, yes, um, only that I think that the first question gets at whether they've read the charter and you know they you know they may say i haven't read the charter but i go to meetings and i see how it's being implemented okay. so i've read sections i i feel like we can put a little bit more responsibility on the people that we're interviewing to to hopefully have read it better than i have um, or at least at, at how I would prepare myself. If I were applying to this committee, I would definitely be diving into parts of the charter that felt important to me. I'm kind of going back to Athena's point of, and I'm kind of now leaning on, we should get rid of this one, uh, Councillor Ryan. And then I'm gonna tell folks, we're gonna spend three more minutes on this. I know we are not through it. And I'm gonna give you homework before we come back together, but um, three more minutes on this. We will get done with one category, Councillor Ryan. So again, connect this question of um, strengths, weaknesses, or missing elements to specific elements in our selection guidance. Mm -hmm. Somebody connect it for me, please. Does anyone have a connection for Councilor Ryan? Pat? For the committee. Yes, for the committee. Thank you. No, it's, just, it's for me. Maybe too. here, but I don't see it. Unless it's prior engagement with the charter development process, but that's really not it. Um, that could be it, but that favors a specific group. Right. Because then the only group that could answer that question well would be folks who had prior engagement. Or somebody who read the charter. But that's not prior engagement. I mean, if, if we want to make that, we put it in a selection guide. Must have read the must have read the charter. We had that in here and then we deleted it. No, no, I mean amongst our only selection guidance. No, I know. We right. had that in the selection guidance and then we deleted it. Right. Because I don't think that in the end it's all that. I agree. I agree. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm actually Hopefully somebody's read it. <laughs> I could folks on this call have maybe. Hopefully uh, somebody's read it. Lynn? Somehow or another, we need to be able to determine where people's perspectives are on the charter. I mean, again, if we have a nine committee members and all nine of them wish we had never had this charter and still want to go back to town meeting. We need to know that. Pat? I do, do not want to delete this question. Okay. I think it's an important question. And I think that most people would answer it to the best of their ability. Um, you know, I can imagine, uh, People who have served on the council be applying for this committee. There are several councillors now over the course of five years that have changed that. And that's one way of experiencing the charter. Having been on the charter review committee is another way of experiencing it. Uh, sitting in a meeting and uh, hearing, you know, councillors talk about the charter or to hear Athena expound on the charter and, and what our limitations are. Those are important ways of experiencing it too. I think I want to hear some opinions. I want to know who's, who, where people are. I don't want to, look, I can go down that list and I can pretty much make a tally sheet, boom, 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 boom. But I could be really wrong about how somebody is thinking about what they're going to say is a weakness of the charter. And I and I can close my mind in advance because I think I know what they're going to say. I want it out I want to hear what they say. So I'm not deciding based on my own prejudices. I think Pat what you just said is actually what I want to hear. 
is we are asking, how do you see the charter impacting different populations in Amherst? I'd like to hear what's your experience been with the charter? And then I think we can ask the follow-up of, are there particular areas? Because I think that for me, to your point, if someone has experienced a town council meeting and has tried to engage with the council, but hasn't necessarily read the charter, this question is really hard to answer. But if we say, what's your experience been with the, with the charter? And they might say, I just learned that it's the thing that governs the town council meeting or that like is how the town council functions. And this is the problem I've seen. That's, a, I wanna hear that, right? Um, but for me, I worry that this is still getting at the idea of if I don't know it backwards and forwards and I'm not coming in with preconceived ideas, I shouldn't be on this committee. And this committee is going to be an incredible learning curve for the folks who are on it. So I'd like to at least add the, what has your experience been with the charter? Are there particular areas that you see of strengths, weaknesses, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I wanna add some context in it that makes this a question that someone who hasn't gone through and redlined the charter already can answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynn? I like the idea of having that first question you've mentioned and then the second one. I also think we may decide to reorder these at some point, Absolutely. so. Oops. That was it. Uh, last one, because we're over time, and then I'm going to give you homework, Counselor Ate. Um, I was thinking we should eliminate B, because somehow B can be captured in prior experience. This section on prior experiences. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so Councillor Ete is saying get rid of B because ideally it's covered in the entire other section. Is there any opposition to that? I agree. Right. I think we could either move it or, but I think that this is, the only thing I, I'm thinking though is that we don't, this is talking about town government. This is talking about volunteering. We don't necessarily have anything that's like outside of those things. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wondering, I think in our next meeting, we'll talk about this, but for right now, can I move this down to here? Um, because I think that, for example, if someone works in an occupation, like we haven't talked about that, it's specifically engagement as a volunteer or engagement in town government. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? So I, I, I agree it should be out of the first section. And look, we got down to three questions, but um, I think maybe we can think about this I'm not ready to delete it quite yet without more discussion. And we don't have time for more discussion. We're gonna stop. Um, what I would like you to please do this, I will share this document out with you again. Um, I will share it as a Word document. I'm writing this down so I don't forget to do it. Tomorrow, I will share it with you as a Word document. Um, I would like you to please spend some time on this. Um, and um, on it to send as Word doc. Um, please spend some time on this and, and uh, make comments on which ones you think could be cut, which ones you think should be um, adjusted, however, um, so that we can, and, and specifically bearing in mind the selection guidance that we approved, which I will also send to you, uh, so that when we come to our next meeting, we can discuss these and hopefully vote on them. Um, that's the end of the sentence. Questions on this, Lynn? I want to just be very clear. Any statements I'm making are in the interest of balance, making sure that we don't have, you know, only people who are over 50 or making sure that we don't have uh, people who, you know, maybe voted against the charter versus people who were all for it. I want balance on this committee because it's an opportunity to relook at the charter. The other thing is we there is a person in the audience and we need to probably pause for public comment. Okay, um, I wanna finish this part of our agenda and then we'll, we'll go back. Um, Pat? Yeah, I just wanna say, I agree with Lynn, I, but I think that we're all coming from the same place. I don't feel like there's any specific agenda coming from any counselor on this committee right now. I really don't. Thank you. Is everyone clear on what I'm asking you to do? I'm not sure I was clear yeah. in how I phrased it. Okay. Um, all right, we are gonna move on. I'll send you your homework. 
Um, moving on to the review process and timing for the town manager evaluation. I thought you were going to do public comment. Oh, sorry. Yes. You've already you. done public comment. We did already do public comment, but I will pause. Um, I remember that. Yes, yeah, at the beginning, we just didn't have any I missed it somehow. All right. Sorry. That's okay. Um, we have to do it if we've done it. <laughs> I will happily pause again. Um, and we do have one attendee at this time. If you'd like to make public comment, please raise your hand and I can allow you to speak. Five, four. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the review process and timing for the town manager evaluation. You all had two items that uh, were sent to you, including the relevant charter section. Y'all get to once again, refresh on the charter. Um, and the document from last year, uh, the timeline specifically, I thought this would be the most helpful document to read. I didn't wanna send you the full 200 and some odd pages of evaluation. Um, so instead I just sent you the timeline to try to give you a, a taste of how it works. Um, and I know that many of us have engaged in this before, but wanted to send this because I think it gives a clear view of the process. What I'd like us to start with is really thinking about what the purpose of the town manager evaluation is. So that's why I included the charter, the charter section, which is a whopping one sentence. Um, which is the town council shall conduct an annual review for the purpose of assessing the town manager's performance. So the purpose is defined by the charter is that to assess the town manager's performance. I want us to think a little more broadly um, on what's why, what is our why for this? And I'd love to hear from folks about what do you feel is the, the purpose of, of doing this annual review? Any thoughts? Lynn. The town council has two employees. One is the town manager, and the other one is the clerk of the town council. And as with any employee, I think we as a body owe it to that employee to evaluate them against a set of pre-stated goals. And that's why we spend time on goals and then we evaluate that employee against the goals. To me, that's the easy part. The part is how do you assess those, that, how do you do the assessment? Okay. Any other thoughts on what, why, on what the why is? Pat? I agree with what Lynn said, but I also feel like it's a, a time for us as a group uh, to reflect together mm -hmm. um, and for the town manager to reflect on his own work, but to also hear the voices of other people in the community, uh, staff, town members, committee members, et cetera, uh, and, and use that information to, to evaluate, to judge the town manager's work and uh, his and what's been accomplished and what's still undone. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a negative thing. I see it as a supportive thing. Councilor Ryan. So what begins as a process of our evaluating Paul on specific um, goals that we have set for him as a town council becomes this vast uh, process of consulting everybody under the sun and getting tons and tons and tons of reams of stuff from all kinds of other sources. And I have yet to be convinced that this in any way, shape or form uh, helps us evaluate him. Um, because we're focused on the goals and whether he accomplishes them. Um, it seems that we find out how successful he is um, by listening to our constituents and and simply keeping our eyes and ears open. I guess I, I'm wondering how come a process that involves a town council ends up having 15 other pieces and becomes this gargantuan 
huge effort that uh, I just, you know, if it were just us and and going through the the his goals and then each of us weighs in on whether we a success we think he's been based on our experiences of him and perceptions of him and our own right um that would seem to be a fairly straightforward process but it seems to be much more complicated than that are you saying specifically because of the feedback that we get from staff and community members the forms we send out to staff i don't yeah uh, i you know and it may just be me but um i don't find that that's um yeah, how helpful is that? How useful is it? Um, and uh, yeah, can we? I guess you know, can we simplify this process in any way, shape, or form? That is that, that can be one of our goals here. I, I mean, it, it seems like we are unique in the Commonwealth. I mean, in terms of the degree to which we do this, and it's not clear at all that we're getting any better result or any deeper. In fact, I think it's just the opposite, personally. But um, and so I would love to simplify this and I would love to, um, you know, uh, focus it, um, anyway. I hear you. And, and that's actually one of my ideas for, for the next time we come together on this is to actually look at other towns to look at their processes. Lynn. So the problem I see with this evaluation process that we inherited and have not taken the time to really look at, which I'm glad we're doing, is really along the lines that George is talking about. But it's frankly because we don't even get a representative sample. And so if from a research standpoint and from a fairness standpoint and from a reliability standpoint, the feedback we do get from staff, from the community and from committee chairs or committees isn't even reliable. It's it's not a sample. It's mostly people who may have a complaint or it's other people who want to make sure that they're there countering the complaints. I, I find the input from those other sources not to be something from a standpoint of reliability that I can count on. So I I really, either we come up with a better way to get input or we or stop pretending we get it. Because if you have 300 and some staff and only 20 answer the survey, you don't have a sample. You don't even have anything. So that's my, my that's been my concern from day one about this process. And yet, if we stop asking the public or the staff for their input, then we run the danger, oh, you didn't seek our input. Mm -hmm. So I I feel like we're caught in a dilemma. Thank you. So I see this as an attempt at a 360 review, um, right? It's an attempt at not at the town council we see a very limited side of Paul's work, right? And so I think that for me, I have really appreciated the, I, Lynn, I understand that it's not necessarily, we don't know if it's a representative sample or not, right? So um, we can, based on departments, kind of sort of tell, but even then we don't know. Um, but I, I have appreciated hearing from the staff because I feel that the town council in many ways is disconnected from the staff. I'm not saying that's, an, that's a wrong thing, um, but we don't work every day in, in town hall or DPW or fire, whatever. Um, and so I think for me, hearing from staff has been a really helpful piece of informing how I look at the goals and how I think about, because one of the goals is the exact, like running the executive functioning of the town and that includes supervision. Um, I do think that there could be a better way to look at how we consider this as a 360 review um, and how we seek input, whether that's something that we say is an expectation of certain direct reports or second, like, I think that there's a way to look at that where we're still gathering staff input, um, but we're able to at least get a bit more of an idea as it pertains specifically to the goals that we're evaluating the town manager on. Um, and 
we get stuck in this catch 22, where if Paul reports to us and we stay in our lane of legislative, how do we make sure that the folks in the executive side, all of the staff are, and to be clear, I think that Paul cares deeply and I'm not, this is actually kind of not about Paul. So I'm going to zoom out and just say town manager. How do we evaluate that aspect of the town manager's work so that someone is looking at his management of his staff, right? So I, I think that that's a consideration here and I want us to be, um, keep that in mind. Um, similarly, thinking through committees, there are many committees that don't work with Paul kind of at all. And there are some committees that work with him much more. And so I think that we should think about who we're, who we're asking um, as we go in, but I'm, I'm writing all this down. I'm gonna go to George and Athena because I think Athena's probably had lots of thoughts about <laughs> what I just said. Um, George, Councilor Ryan. So I would imagine in the real world, um, if you were charged with evaluating the manager of a series of departments, which I take it is what we are charged with doing. You would interview or have conversations with those department heads and talk to them about privately, whatever, off the record, whatever you'd have, you, but we don't do that. Um, and I understand that we can't, and I absolutely respect that we cannot uh, play that kind of game. But when it comes to the process of evaluation, I don't see how we can do that if we don't actually have some kind of conversation at the highest level with those who actually um, work with and under Paul. Yeah. So that's, yeah. No, I, and, George, I think. It, it, yeah, right. And if that doesn't happen, there's a fair amount of this that is is kind of, you know, pretend. Um, Pat, and it's not I, meant to be, it's meant to be helpful, but I don't see how it can be helpful if you don't actually have these kinds of conversations. And so I, it would be interesting to find out, as you said earlier, what other towns and cities do. Maybe there's some very good reasons. Did George freeze for everybody else or was it just me? He's me, frozen. Uh, okay. Yeah. George was saying that he agrees with every single thing I just said. Um, and yet I, I, I'm going to respond to George's point, assuming that he will come okay, back. Okay, but you're interrupting and it's uh, you didn't have your hand raised. Excuse me, as chairs of this meeting, you need to remain muted until I call on you, Ms. Pat. Um, what I was saying was uh, uh, I wanted to know if George meant something beyond what we are asking the staff to do now. Athena? I um, just had a thought and I wonder if the committee would be interested in thinking about like how how would you measure how Paul manages his staff like what metrics would you use mm -hmm. would you would right. you measure staff turnover would you measure um, you know a percentage of staff evaluation completed on time or something because I think there are ways of getting at that question that's not hearing directly from staff um, not to say that you shouldn't or something but that thought just came up for me while you were having your conversation thank you um, Pat I want to clarify I do keep raising my hand and then whenever I call on someone uh, zoom automatically keeps lowering my hand so I apologize that I am butting in okay. I, I am trying to figure out how and to I apologize too I was being snarky I'm never snarky, so I don't know what that's like. George, welcome back. Um, Pat, did you unmute because you wanted to raise your hand and say something? No, no, okay. Um, George, uh, where you got dropped off was you were talking about how we might better hear from staff, um, I think, and more strategically, and Athena was making the point of how do you measure how Paul manages his staff? What questions might we ask? Is that a, a measure of looking at staff turnover? Um, staff evaluations completed on time, what questions might we ask? Um, was there another part of your comment that you wanted to make? I think I, I pretty much said what I had to say. Thank you. Um, all right, so, uh, Athena, your hand is still up. I think it's a leftover. Okay, so here's what I would like us to do. Um, we are at 9.20. Um, I don't think we have any minutes to approve today, so we're gonna be wrapping up in a moment here. Um, 
what I'd like to do if, if the committee will allow me to do this, um, I, sorry, I'm thinking out loud. I can put together a list of towns or folks can look it up on their own. I just don't want to duplicate efforts um, of comparable size and other towns that have a council or mayor and other towns that are comparable size who have town meeting, but do uh, select board evaluations of the, their town manager. I said town ma mayor, I meant town manager. Um, yeah. I'd like to find some, uh, a variety of different scenarios. Um, and I can, um, I, I, I don't think that I can send that list to you all uh, without breaking open meeting law. So I, I think Athena, can you help me out here? Can I do anything? Yeah, you can you can send stuff out for discussion at the next meeting or or whatever okay. list of towns. Fine. Okay. Um, and then if I may. Yes. Also, um, it's 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 somewhat fortunate that the council is having the retreat next week and is going to talk about the town manager goals because I think that conversation is really going to help this committee. Yeah. Figure yeah. out what what success looks like in each of those goals and and that might help the committee think about how the council would measure that success like if it's really clear that he's accomplished something yes or no then do you need more information beyond that and and so on so i think it might be helpful after the retreat to consider some of that just conversation thank you i agree uh councillor ryan so you're going to give us a list of towns or cities that might be, and then the thought is that each one of us maybe would go off and try and, and find out. I don't know how one finds this out. I actually, at the MMA, went to talk to the MMA people, and they were surprisingly unhelpful. <laughs> um, they looked at me like I was crazy. And I thought, well, this is one of our primary functions. And they just, you know, so maybe that was just I got the wrong person at the end of the meeting. Who knows? But are you thinking that then each one of us would perhaps volunteer to take a look at a sample city and try and find out a town and find out how they do, what their process is? And then the second question is, if that is true, if someone could give us maybe Athena or somebody or Lynn advice on how we'd actually find it. I mean, maybe just call up town hall and say, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, is that what you have in mind, us helping you out a little bit here, as opposed to you going off and trying to do this in addition to your full-time job uh, on your own? Yes, um, and consulting gigs, George, don't forget the consulting gigs. Uh, yes, I um, was halfway through describing this. So what my plan, no, 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 you didn't interrupt me. I interrupted myself by being like, can I actually legally do this? So yes, um, I will send out a list of, of cities and towns. Um, I was planning to keep it within Massachusetts, but I don't know if that's necessary, but just to give myself parameters, I was planning to keep it inside Massachusetts. Um, I'll send out a list of cities and towns. I'll give everyone between one to three of them. You, I would like you to reach out to their, either their town council president, their mayor, their town manager, or someone at town halls, generally the idea, um, and ask them if they have, I will send you questions that I believe would be just general information questions. Um, my plan is to ask them, what is your, do you have a system of evaluating your town manager or your person? Um, what is that system? What works about it? And what would you change about it? Those are my four questions. Um, and yes, I would like people to reach. And if you have additional ones you'd like to ask on your own, that's obviously your prerogative, but I think that kind of is around a sort of a round picture. Um, I know that there are several towns that have really interesting uh, processes. Chatham, Massachusetts is one that I've looked into um, that are publicly available. So sometimes you may not even need to call, but if you would like to get their perspective on it, it would be interesting to, to do that outreach if you're able to. Um, and then yes, people would bring that back to the next meeting. We'll, we'll kind of discuss it and see if there are elements we wanna borrow, um, elements that we wanna avoid and um, yeah, kind of go from there. I agree. I think that because we base our evaluation off of the goals, the town man, the town council retreat next week may be helpful for us in thinking about what does accomplishment look like for these goals. Um, I will tell you that my part of my job <laughs> includes doing performance management work, and uh, we set terrible goals, y'all. They are not they they break all the goal rules. Um, so I think that it'll be helpful to kind of think about them in that context as well. Does that seem feasible to people um, is question one. Our next meeting 
is on April 4th, I believe. Yeah. So I will try to get you those lists tomorrow. If you're not done by April 4th, just let me know. That's okay. Um, but that is the current plan if folks are okay with it. Lynn. I don't, it's unclear that I will be here April 4th. I okay. have something else that will probably run right into this and well past the time you start. I may try to join later, but I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Do you think you would be able to email me any notes that you take if you do that? Or would you rather wait and give a verbal report at another time? I don't know. No worries. Keep me posted. Um, that actually is bringing me to my next point, which is that I will not be here on the 18th. And so, um, Councillor Ette, if you are, are you able to chair the meeting on the 18th? Yes, I will with the support of everyone else. And and I'm happy to check in with you and, and um, help you out before that too. It will be a way that, um, that whole week. All right, uh, Pat, you're muted. Sorry, I feel like we're getting ready to adjourn and I wanted to bring up, but we, we might, I'd wanted to bring up an issue. Yes, um, I had one other thing as well. I'm not totally ready to adjourn yet. Um, you and I might be bringing up the same issue. Uh, would it's you like future agenda item stuff for me? So maybe okay. So mine was something. Um, I'm going to move on from town manager evaluation. This was something I wanted to check in, um, with Athena about that I I would like to put on a future agenda. Um, we obviously had some things said at a at the Monday town council meeting in public comment that were um extremely upsetting. And so it was mentioned that GOL might be able to put something together, um, some sort of statement that could be read prior to public comment commencing. That is not, we cannot legally set a bound on what people say at public comment, that is very clear. But what we can say is that we encourage um, something, right? Like we encourage whatever. I, I believe that that is okay to say. Um, this is not something that we are going to do tonight, but it is something that I, with the committee's sort of general consensus of agreement, would like to um, discuss at a future meeting. Pat? I think I'd like you to go to Councillor Ette before I speak, because okay. I'm, I want to shift the topic. Of oh, sure, sure, sure. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Ette? I remember th that um, request being made to Jewel but being made as a statement to be, sp to be spoken at the end. And so I think that um, in whatever statement that will be crafted, perhaps it would be good to have the statement both at the beginning and at the end of public comment. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Lynn. First of all, I want to thank both of you for bringing it up and for those comments. I'm just looking for help. Absolutely. Because I Monday night was not something I hope we ever have to experience again. We can't stop it, but we can at least make a statement. But that's a future agenda item. We've said it. Mm. Thank you. Yep. Um, absolutely. Pat? One of the uh, important carryover items was the reparations follow committee follow up, yeah. and uh, we have not looked at that at all. And I'd like to get it on the agenda as soon as possible. We do not have it. Um, I wrote back to that letter. I did not CC the full council because I can't because of open meeting law. But um, I responded to the letter explaining, as I explained at the beginning, that we have not yet received that letter back from KP uh, that report back from KP Law. So I cannot put it on agenda yet because we do not have it. Um, one, as soon as we get it back from KP law, I will put it on an agenda okay, thank um, you. and, and I, and it is in our work plan as well. That was in the last meeting packet as a TBD item, because again, we, we don't have it. Um, I will follow up to, to see when that is expected back as well. Lynn. Um, thank you. We don't have the legal opinion back yet. That's yep. the problem. Yeah. Councilor Ryan. I believe nuisance bylaw was uh, referred to us. Is that right? So Second verse, same as the first. It is a, with legal review. We will be getting it as soon as they are done with oh, it. So it's with legal review. Okay. Yep. All right, fine. Thank you. 
Thank you for, for checking in on that. Yeah. Um, and the, the sponsors of that determined that it could be separated out from rental registration so that we, the council can consider them separately. Um, Pat can probably speak more to this if she, if she wants to, but, um, we will, we, uh, rental registration had legal review if I'm getting that right, but nuisance bylaw did not. And so we want to, um, we want that before we look at it, because if we look at it in legal disagrees with what we say. Yeah. Um, all right. Any other questions? The answer is probably it's with legal. Uh, Lynn? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? <laughs> I need okay. to hear a second. Uh, Councillor Ate seconded. Thank you. I'm going to call the vote. Councillor Ryan? Aye. I am a yes. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Lynn Griesmer? Aye. Councillor Ate? Aye. All right. We are adjourned at 931. Thank you all very, very much. I Thank you, Athena. Thank you, Athena. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night. Thanks. Bye.